Update I think my Sills 23F best friend 23F is trying to get with my 25F husband 28M and she's encouraging him. Am I delusional? My Sill 23F is my husband's 28M half-sister. She was the product of their mother's infidelity. His father divorced their mother when he was 12 after he found out through a paternity test she wasn't his. My father-in-law refused to have anything to do with my Sill but continued to have a relationship with my husband. Because of this my Sill is very clingy to my husband. My husband is also very protective of his sister and generally doesn't tolerate anything negative being said about her. Which is why I'm posting this here before mentioning anything to him. My husband and I bought a house last year which has its own indoor swimming pool. My Sill was super excited when she saw it and asked if she could use it sometimes with her friend. We said it was fine. As long as she gave us a notice before she turned up. Her and her friend Chloe have used it many times before but almost never when my husband is home he is a lawyer and works long hours. With lockdown, my husband has started to work from home. My Sill asked me if she and Chloe could come over and use the pool. I told her I was uncomfortable with them coming over as I'm pregnant and don't want to accidentally expose the baby to anything risky. My Sill then asked if she and Chloe quarantined for two weeks would they be able to come over. My husband said it was fine. Two weeks later they turn up to my house. My husband was in his office, so they go straight to the pool after making small talk. My husband ends up coming out after an hour and we're hanging out in the kitchen. My Sill walks in to get a drink and she starts talking to my husband. Before she goes back to the pool, she says Chloe's going to be so happy to see you. It was weird because my husband and Chloe aren't close. Chloe comes into the kitchen two minutes later and spends the rest of her time talking to my husband until he excuses himself to get back to work. She's super giggly and smiley when she talks to him. He would say something sarcastic and she would laugh like it was the funniest joke she's ever heard. It honestly felt like she was flirting with him. Before she went back to the pool, she gave me this weird smirk why look. Before they leave, they ask my husband if he's working from home every day of the week. He confirms he is. The next two weeks, they come over to the house to swim every single day. Except, Chloe never gets in the water. Instead she hangs around the house in her bikini she was previously wearing a one piece if it makes a difference every single day. Whenever my husband comes out to hang around me, she quickly interrupts him and keeps him talking until he has to go back to work. I made lunch for us all and when I excused myself to call my husband down, my sill quickly stopped me and said Chloe could call him for me. They shared a look and Chloe looked really happy when she went to get him. Chloe has also started to get touchier with my husband. She's put her hands on his chest and arms, stands or sits really close to him. To my husband's credit he does usually create space between them whenever she does something like this. The reason I believe my sill is in on this is because she's made a few pregnancy related jabs at me recently. She told me a story about how one of her friend's boyfriends was cheating on her and then said something along the lines of did you know a lot of men start cheating when their wives are pregnant. She's also made comments about how I look chubby now and it looks weird next to my husband because he's well built. If she spots my husband out of the office she quickly goes to inform Chloe. I know pregnancy hormones can mess with a person's brain so I'm wondering if I'm just looking for something that isn't there. My Sil sent me a text yesterday asking if they could come over to swim next week and I really want to say no but I know she'll whine to my husband if I do. I ideally want to have a conversation with him before then but I'm not sure if I should mention the flirting. Am I being delusional? Too long didn't read Sills and her friend are constantly asking to come over to use our pool but her friend never swims. Instead, she waits around to start talking with my husband. She seems very flirtatious whenever she talks to him but I'm not sure if it's just pregnancy hormones getting to me. Update. Well, I read and reread all of the comments on the original post to try and figure out how I was going to bring up the issue. Turns out, I didn't have to. We were watching a movie and my phone lit up with another text from my sill telling me she was now going to be here at 1pm the next day to swim with Chloe. My husband saw it and told me to tell her not to come. This is really weird behavior for my husband because he tends to do anything to accommodate my sill and very rarely refuses her anything. I asked him if something had happened and he shrugged it off and we kept watching the movie. A few minutes later he paused the movie and said he wanted to ask me a question. He asked if I'd noticed Chloe never swam when she came to our house. I wish I could say I was calm and collected like the comments were advising but I ended up laughing hysterically. I was honestly just so relieved he'd brought it up instead of me having to be the one to do it. I think my husband thought I was losing my mind. When I finally stopped laughing, he repeated the question and said he wanted a serious answer. I said, of course I've noticed and he awkwardly replied so you must have noticed the other thing too. To summarize the conversation that followed my husband hadn't noticed Chloe was flirting with him the first few days because he was so busy with work. He wasn't really paying attention to anything else. He said when she started getting handsy is when he suddenly had the light bulb moment that she was into him. He says he didn't want to unnecessarily stress me out. So he never mentioned anything. But he was worried I'd noticed too and thought he was interested because he hadn't immediately shut it down. 
He realized we would eventually have to have this talk, but he wasn't sure how to bring it up oh the irony. He did privately speak to Chloe and told her he was happily married and wasn't interested in starting anything with anyone else. Apparently, she never took him seriously because she kept doing it. In the end, he called his sister on Sunday to tell her either she got her to stop or Chloe couldn't come over anymore. His sister ended up having a tantrum and said a few nasty things about me the baby our relationship. She insisted I was somehow behind his request and made some comments about how I was controlling and insecure because I looked like a beach whale and Chloe was younger and hotter. He was pretty pissed at this and said if she said something like that about me again, he would stop speaking to her. She claimed I had baby trapped him and when my husband pointed out we were already married so I didn't need to trap him and that he was the one who wanted to start a family she kept insisting I had manipulated him into feeling that way. She claimed he was unhappy in our relationship and he always looked tired because I was forcing him to slave away to fund my fancy lifestyle. Whilst I sat on my ass all day, he pointed out he chose to be a lawyer knowing he would have to work long hours and I had only recently left my job. So her accusations were baseless. She said some other stuff along the same lines but the thing that made my husband finally snap was when she said that the baby was already ruining everything and it was just going to get worse when it was born and he should have dragged me to the abortion clinic whilst he had the chance. He told her neither her nor Chloe were welcome in our home anymore until they apologized for how they'd been behaving and for the things my sill said. He said he wasn't sure he could ever forgive or forget what she'd said about our child even if she did apologize and he couldn't believe she would even think something like that, let alone say it. Apparently, she started crying and said she was sorry, that she didn't mean it and she was just scared to lose him and that she wasn't thinking clearly. He hung up on her. He showed me his phone and she's been calling him and texting him since begging him to reply. He asked if she'd said anything to me. I was debating whether to say anything or not, but he kept insisting he knew she had said something. And he wanted to know what it was. I told him the things I mentioned in the original post and a few other things she had said. He asked me why I never mentioned anything when she first said it and I mentioned how he got really defensive whenever I said anything even slightly negative about his sister and he got defensive. I pointed out he was doing it again and after some back and forth he admitted that maybe he was a little bit defensive when it came to her but he promised to stop and he wanted to make sure we could talk about anything, including his sister. He ended up mentioning wanting to try couples counseling. He said it wasn't because he thought there was something wrong with our relationship but apparently he has been speaking to his dad a lot recently and he mentioned one thing he regretted about his marriage with mother-in-law is that they never went to therapy until the cracks in their relationship were too big. In his current marriage they go. And it's helped him avoid the mistakes of his first marriage. I agreed. So we're probably going to try that soon. My husband thinks my sill will eventually turn up even if we tell her. Not to. But he promised he'd deal with her if she does. So. Reddit I guess you were right. I really did just need to speak to him. Thanks for the advice and comments. I enjoyed reading them all. Too long didn't read we talked. Husband already confronted both the friend and Sil. Sil said some really shitty things so we won't be contacting her for a while. Communication is key folks. This is a good update. A couple communicating honestly that solves a problem and going to therapy for a check-in to help them facilitate better communication in the future. You love to see it. Wishing you and your husband the best and I hope this means a little less stress for you during your pregnancy. Chloe and your sill sound massively trashy. For real. I chuckle that it's because Chloe's younger. Though, they're 23 and 25. Big ducking whoop. Greer update. I just want to add I think couple counseling is a fantastic idea. Usually, people don't know how their own feelings works, nor how to deal with them. So working for a healthy communication and for a better understanding of your own feelings is always a good thing to do. You don't need to have a problem to go and work on your relationship. Good luck. Second story. My boyfriend's friends called me a butterface and my boyfriend co-signed. I've been with my boyfriend for two years. I thought he was attracted to me. All of me. He's never called me ugly and always compliments me with or without makeup. Last night he brought his friends over. I'm cool with them but we're not that close so usually when they do come over to play video games and smoke. I go upstairs. That night when I was walking past the room to the bathroom I could hear my name. The door was closed but I stopped to listen I know eavesdropping is wrong but when they said my name, I heard one of my boyfriend's friends say that they hate that I always leave when they come because I wear shorts and tank top around the house and usually dress more conservatively when I'm around them in social settings. He went on to say that I have a fat ass and nice boobs but I'm a butterface without makeup. If you don't know, it's when a girl has a nice body but her face. And my boyfriend laughed, loudly, he didn't even defend me. His reply, her body is perfect. What? They moved on to a different topic and started talking about other girls so I gave up on listening and went back upstairs. I don't think I'm ugly but I did cry. I'm ashamed to say my self-esteem took a hit but it did. It hurt worse to know that my boyfriend laughed and didn't defend my looks. 
I won't lie and say I'm the best supermodel, but I'm not ugly. I have shoulder length, brown hair, clear skin, features are decent. Maybe my eyebrows could be less sparse and I wear glasses but I would give myself a solid 6-10 without makeup and maybe a 8 with. Maybe I'm just delusional. I felt sick sleeping next to my boyfriend and wouldn't let him touch me. He's attracted to my body and not my face and I hate myself low key. I'm 22. He's 25. Update. I wasn't expecting to get so many replies. I read every single one and I want to thank you all. Breaking up wasn't even a thought on my mind but seeing men saying they wouldn't allow their friends to say that and women saying they wouldn't tolerate that helped me be more confident in bringing it up to my boyfriend because I wasn't planning on it. Last night I sat him down and I told him that I overheard his conversation with his friends and how what they said was really hurtful and it stung worse that he didn't defend me and just laughed. At first he denied it ever happened and I got upset and almost cried because I felt so frustrated. Then he admitted it and said it was just a dumb joke and he forgot about it 5 minutes later. Then he said that his friends' opinions wouldn't matter so much to me if I didn't care about their thoughts on my physical appearance. I said I don't care what they think it's the fact that they said it and you sat there and laughed. He said that he finds me attractive if that's what I want to hear so badly, and that if my friend said he was a butterface he wouldn't care because he isn't attracted to them and since I care, I must have some sort of attraction. To his friends, I got up and said that we're done. How is he gonna flip this on me and make it seem like I want to be with his friends because their comment upset me? His reaction is what upset me. He said that if I'm breaking up with him because his friends think I'm unattractive then I'm doing him the biggest favor of his life. So we're over. I'm moving in with my sister in her spare guest room. I'm so heartbroken. His reaction wasn't what I thought it was going to be. I don't want to end things with him thinking I like his friends but I guess it is what it is. I'm moving on. He doesn't care about me and I wasted two years over him. It's whatever. I'm not interesting isn't dating now but there's more fish in the sea. Edit wow thanks for so many awards. I'm actually shocked by all. These responses. He found out about this post and sent it to me saying I'm insecure for going to reddit for my relationship problems. He said he's gonna sue for slander but I didn't say his name. He cussed me out in multiple messages and I blocked him. To all the positive comments. Thanks for your support. All your kind words helped me through all the crying I was doing yesterday. To all the negative comments saying I'm ugly and weak for ending things over something so stupid. I'm sorry but my peace of mind and not feeling like shit everything I'm around a guy is way more important to me than being in a relationship. All the incels making dumb sandwich jokes and saying misogynistic comments because they're upset I broke up with him. I understand someone ending a relationship something you'll never experience is unfathomable to you. So I won't get too upset by your dumb comments. Third story. My best friend wants me to work with my rapist on her wedding. I have a best friend we'll call her Tina who I've known most of my life. We have had a strong friendship from middle school all the way until we graduated from the same college. We have always been there for each other. And I tell her pretty much everything. Back in junior year of high school, a guy will call him Rod raped me at a house party. He never apologized for it. And it put me in a deep downward spiral to the point where I almost wanted to drop out in order to never see his face again. I told Tina about it. And she did everything she could to support me. Fast forward to early 2020, Tina and her boyfriend Josh announced that they were getting engaged. And Tina wanted me to be the maid of honor. I was beyond excited to do it. We've always talked about being each other's maids of honor. There was another detail though. Josh had a similar friendship history with his best man, and they thought it would be adorable if the maid of honor and best man worked together on everything and were their own second package on the wedding day. I guess it was their way of making us feel a little more excited for weddings of our own. I found out that the best man was going to be Rod, and that he and Josh remained best friends after high school. I thought Rod was just in the friend group, but it turns out they were as close as could be. My heart sunk and I simply didn't know how to respond. They expected us to work together and be together the whole wedding process. And that sounded like literal hell. I started thinking about whether Tina never told Josh or that Josh heard and just didn't care. All I know is that I was having second thoughts about the wedding after that. I texted Tina about my concerns with Rod coming in the most polite way possible. And she sent me this in reply. I know about what happened with you guys back in the day. But Rod seems to be a great guy now. It would just really mean a lot if you can push that memory away for the duration of this. Please just trust me. I didn't know how to respond to this. And luckily the wedding planning process has been at a halt since COVID. I haven't responded to her since that text but now this has really been bugging me. Should I just say no? It would probably break her heart, but I just don't know if I can handle working with my rapist. Help. Update. First of all, thank you so much for the support on my first post. I did not expect it to gain that much attention. I guess a lot happened since then. I don't know if it's even been a week yet, but this is going to change my life. Perhaps for the better. There were hundreds of comments. And I thought I'd address a few questions regarding the rape itself. I don't appreciate how some of these were asked, but I'll share anyway for the sake of clarifying things. Was I under the influence? 
Yes, but I remember vividly saying no. I was drunk enough to have all my strength and mobility wonky but I didn't black out or anything. The force he used on me didn't seem that of someone who was drunk. He looked completely sober, but I could be wrong. I remember a couple of times when I was trying to lift myself off the bed and he would push me back down. I remember the expression on his face. Like you guys said, I wouldn't wish it on my worst enemy. That's all I am willing to share for now. The only person who knows all the details is Tina. Is it bad that I wish she knew nothing now? Maybe it would hurt less. Why didn't I report it? Because I saw how that turned out for other girls I knew. I've had a few other friends not Tina who have had the same thing happen to them and nothing came out of reporting it. And, it made them feel worse. Just the few comments calling me a liar stung. So I can't imagine how I would have felt back as my unstable teen self. Not only that, I was scared of what Rod would do if he found out I had reported him. There was just something about him that made me never want to cross him. Reading all your comments, it seems pretty clear that how Tina was treating me was extremely inconsiderate, and I should find a new friend. Although it was a huge slap in the face, I came to my senses and believed that I couldn't be around someone who would do that to me. Some of you said to expose them during vows, but that's just not the kind of person I am, and it might not turn out well. A few of you gave me example texts I could send which I am extremely thankful for, but I decided to send this. I've had time to think about it, and I just can't be your maid of honor, anymore. It's so hurtful that you are telling me to pack up my trauma for who knows how long until your wedding day. I just can't do it. I don't think I will come at all knowing that he's going to be there. I am sorry. It's pretty weak, but it's probably the meanest text I've ever sent. An hour later, I get a call from Josh. He asked me what was going on with me and Tina, and that she was extremely upset. A part of me snapped and I said I don't know. What's going on with you making someone who raped me best man? I don't usually blurt things out like that. He was confused and I repeated myself. He was silent for a few seconds and then asked if he could come over. I was a little wary of the idea but I said sure. I know. We should be social distancing but this really needed to be discussed. He comes to my apartment 40 minutes later without Tina. I have never hung out with Josh one on one before. It was always with Tina. Josh always had a really cute and sweet personality. And I've always approved of him when it came to dating her. He was really only a friendly acquaintance to me though. We sat down and spoke for over an hour. Tina had told Josh that the reason I wasn't coming to the wedding was that I didn't want to work with Rod, because I had a crush on him, and thought she was forcing the relationship too much. So basically, she said we had a petty girl fight. My jaw hit the floor and I was fuming. She had obviously never told Josh what Rod did to me. I shared that Rod had raped me back in high school, and that Tina knew about it. I asked if he knew too, he said he didn't. But at one point Rod did mention that a few crazy bitches falsely accused him of rape senior year. This obviously didn't include me. Since I only told Tina and a few family members, Josh believed him at the time, but I guess after hearing me say it it's starting to dawn on him that his friend was a liar. Here's something that I didn't expect. Josh shared with me that he was raped when he was a kid by an older brother of a friend he had. He said that if he was forced to work with said brother on a wedding, he would absolutely refuse. He apologized heavily on behalf of Tina, but I won't forgive unless she says it herself. I know some of you may think Josh is lying, but I believe him. I could see it by Josh's face and body language that the realization really weighed down on him. And I felt bad. In a way, we were both going through a betrayal. I asked if he was okay to go home. And he said, yes. He thanked me for telling him and left I don't know if I'll stay in touch with him. But I was beyond furious with Tina at this point. I was expecting an angry text coming from her. And sure enough, I got it at like midnight. She went off saying that I am gonna end up destroying their marriage. How could I do that to her? Etc. Etc. I just pressed the block button and went to bed. Quickest decision ever made. I am feeling a little down in the dumps right now, yet slightly relieved. I am going to try to connect with other friends and try to move on from this. If I am feeling brave enough, I might try to find these crazy bitches and see if we can make a case against Rod. Knowing that there are other victims makes me feel so guilty I want to scream. Sorry it's not too happy of an ending, but I think it might have been more unhappy if I decided to go along with it. Thank you Reddit. Hit like. If you enjoyed this video, Consider subscribing to our channel.